Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn how to use the store procedure with the output parameter in OLEDB command transformation in SSIS package. So I was looking for some different scenarios where this really can be implemented or have real use. Uh, there are very few uh, scenarios and uh, maybe in your requirement uh, there is more use of uh, uh, using uh, this uh, output parameter. But what I could find uh, I have a scenario here. In this video, we will be using a store procedure in OLEDB command transformation with output parameter to get the number of rows updated by each input row. So as we know that the OLEDB command transformation uh, performs uh, or uh, create the a SQL statement or run the SQL statement for each of the row so uh, it can uh, there is a possibility we are getting some input uh, data and for each of the input uh, record we are updating uh, uh, by using a store procedure and it is possibility it is updating multiple records so we are in we are interested to get the count uh, how many records are updated by each of the row so let's go to the SSMS and take a look uh, on our table and store procedure so first of all what I did I have a DBO customer table with the customer ID and customer name in your case you might have more columns and all that I'm keeping it small so I can perform a quick demo so here two columns only then I put the values and if you see here I am putting a duplicate values here for ID 1 and name Amir then I'm having ID 2 and ID 3 with the Raza and Robert so let's run this part and now what we have here let's select the data from this table DBO customer now two record they are duplicate records and then we have unique records here let's uh, go to the store procedure definition so what we are doing here I'm creating a store procedure create procedure procedure name so that's the store procedure name and I'm having input uh, uh, parameter customer ID customer name and then uh, I have output parameter say record count so I will be passing input uh, customer ID and name and inside I will be updating the customer name in the table by using that input uh, parameter now here uh, I will be using customer ID in the where class so depending upon the customer ID we will be updating the customer name there is a possibility let's say we get ID 1 so if I get ID 1 there will be two updates as we have duplicate records in the table so now here what I'm doing I'm setting the record count variable is equal to at the rate at the rate row count that's going to give us the number of rows affected by this uh, update query or the statement so that I save into the record count as it is a output parameter I'm just returning at the end now let's create this store procedure and uh, to run the SSMS uh, and make sure it is working so let me update uh, so I declare a variable so I can call this one uh, as a record count if I want or uh, here I just called it RC so you can call it whatever you want so you have to declare a variable then uh, I'm printing it here just to show you what value I get from the store procedure so here we declare a variable we execute our store procedure I am providing customer ID 1 and I want to update the customer name to the test and this is my output parameter and here I'm printing that value so let me run this one sorry let's run the whole thing now we see that it printed two. it means it returned us the number of records those are got, those got updated is equal to two so let's go and take a look in the table so run a select query and the ID 1 should be updated with the test customer name so that's how it is now if I want to provide the number two here now it should be only updating one record because we have only one customer ID that is equal to two and this Raza should be updated to 
test or maybe test one let's say test one and then here in the record counter it should print only one so that made sure so if you see we made sure our store procedure is working correctly okay let's uh, run this statement again and it will drop the table and uh, just uh, put the clean records again we are not going to touch the store procedure store procedure is fine now we have uh, i one uh, couple duplicate records with the customer ID one and we have two unique records and this value is Amir. So now I have on the other side I have a customer file. So in the customer file I am getting record one two three with the ID and name. So here if you see it is name is full name is Amir Shehzad and here is M Raza and here is Robert Ledson. So we will be running this one when the and we will be using OLED DB command transformation to update these records and when we update it it should return us the record count how many records are uh, updated by each of the row so we are going to do it let's go to the ssdt sql server data tools or if you have bids open the bids and create a new ssis package but right click on the ssis packages so here rename this one real quick don't waste the time OLED DB command transformation store procedure why I named this one because I have a lot of packages and when I perform a demo I can always go back and answer the question sometime if I have the question so let's bring the data flow task here inside the data flow we are going to use the flat file source uh, as we are reading uh, from the flat file so we got the flat file source uh, here now open it make a connection to your input file customer file and then here we see that the values are coming correct let's uh, change the data type of these columns we have customer id that should be integer here it is a um, string so we should be changing to dti4 that's done and the customer name is fine i'm okay with that now hit okay we want to preview it you can go ahead and preview it fine retain null values if you want to get the null values for the blank if you have in the file you can click this one we are fine with that as well click okay now the next part is uh, we are going to bring uh, the OLED db command transformation so bring the OLED db command transformation here and uh, use this one now I want to show you one thing I have to come back but I will show you here so now we will be using the connection so we are using a flat file connection the data is coming from there that's correct now here sorry as uh, uh, it is uh, we are going to update uh, the records uh, by using uh, the store procedure we need to make a connection to the database from where we from where we want to update those records so we will be making a new connection so let's uh, um, here let's see if you we can we don't have option to create a new connection from here so that's fine we can hit uh, cancel and then we can go here and create a new connection and uh, we can select uh, OLEDB here and then add now we have uh, the connection already I can select that one if I don't wanna let me delete this one create a new one so I can show you here you have to select the SQL server instance name and then uh, you can write the name that will make it quick but if uh, you just uh, hit that one it will take some time and resolve it and bring it to you now we are fine so test connection is created now we go to OLEDB command transformation and here we select that connection now we are all good we come to the component properties and here in the SQL command we are going to write that our SQL statement so we are going to run the store procedure so we will be writing this execute store procedure but each of the parameter we will be saying question mark 
question mark and question mark but uh, with the last one we have to put output as it is the uh, output so these uh, question marks will be mapped uh, to the input uh, columns so let's uh, take this uh, and then paste it there now we have to go column mapping and here i can see that customer id can be mapped to customer id and customer name can be mapped to customer name but one thing i don't have a record count column so that's the problem and i cannot set to any variable so there is no option and if i go here and in the output columns i see there is output to, uh, tab we can add a new output but see and when i try to hit that it does not let me do it so that's just there but it doesn't really create or add a new column so that's uh, just i don't know they could have removed it and but they they didn't uh, remove it so it is there but we cannot add a new column from oladb command so that's uh, where uh, limitation is uh, now if we come back here we we have we don't have the column so we have to create a column so let me hit ok for now come back and now remove this part and as you guys know that we can use a drive column transformation to create any column so let me create that column i'm going to create a new column and I'm going to call this a uh, uh, record count update and this uh, uh, I am going to put the zero value when I will put the zero value it is sign integer so it automatically took it that's fine with me I'm going to hit ok now I'm going to connect back to the OLEDB command transformation hit and then go back to the column mapping and then uh, I'm going to map this uh, record count update column to the record count uh, output uh, parameter of a store procedure now let's uh, see what happened let's refresh it so the error is gone now we are all set hit ok now we want to see the number of records got updated with the, the input row for each of that so we can put the multicast here and if i want to write to some file we can write to some file we or we can uh, put to maybe in sql server table for other purpose but here i'm going to just show you so i'm using multicast here and i'm putting a data viewer so we can see that so we, it is going to give us the input uh, uh, customer id customer name and then we will see the record count updated that will be returned by the store procedure after updating the record in the table so let's run this one and as i have shown you already this record let's say for one as we have one and the, the values Ahmed shahzad this record will have count two because in the table you have two records with id one so that's where it is going to return us two updates and then this one will be returning us one and one so let's run it and see okay so we can see that for the first record when it updated with the id one it updated two records and the store procedure did update the records and then returned the output parameter value two and for the second and third it returned us the one and a one so we can hit this one fine close it go and check the customer table and we can see that the values has been updated for customer name and the they, they, for id the both values are updated and that's why it uh, returned us two because it updated two rows let's uh, insert couple more records i'm going to insert two more so let me see here this time what i want to show you for id one now we have four records so when our package is going to run for the first record where id one it is going to return us four so i want to just prove that to you our store procedure is working and it is returning us the output parameter values correctly so as you can see that the customer id one and the count that it did to the all those values in the table by using store procedure is 
four and for the rest of them one so that's how you can use the OLEDB command transformation and you can use the output parameter in a store procedure um, this can be useful some places maybe this for, as I said for update uh, we are getting the order to, for delete it can be fine as well uh, maybe you are deleting some records but uh, one row can delete multiple records uh, and you want to take the order to, or uh, keep the log of those uh, deletes uh, so you can uh, use uh, this output parameter in the OLEDB command transformation so thanks very much for watching this video one more time I would like to say I'm sorry for making the videos long but I want to take the approach where I can show you step by step and any beginner or advanced level person can watch the video and learn all the small components what errors you get where we need to um, make corrections so instead of just walking through the demo quickly and hard for people to get the whole thing so thanks and I will see you in next video